Hello there everyone. Welcome back to Ed's Mental Works again. Well, we're uh, moving on down the kind of the blacksmithing path on this video. I, uh, in recent videos you've seen I got a power hammer and I've been collecting a few tools to do some blacksmithing, so give it a hand anyway. But anyway, here's what we got today. I got my little rivet forge. Um, it's upside down right now. Got a got a real nice hand crank blower for it. All in pretty good shape. The only thing with this forge is the the pan is not lined. It from this heat from this right here, it looks like somebody maybe used it with the pan not being lined. I don't know. But uh, anyway, the screen on the top of the, the screen on the top of the what do they call that? The true Troy or true Troy or something like that is just a it's like a metal or a cast iron sewer cover that somebody used. Well, actually, these outside holes here, this ring of outside holes, they sit on top of the pan in this area here. They're they're sitting out over here. They're they're not really lined up with the with the hole where the air comes through so what we're going to do we're going to plasma cut us one out of this half inch plate here and we're going to make it only five inches in diameter which is in between here i'll get a tape and show you we're going to make it five inches in diameter So uh, we'll eliminate these outside holes, and plus it'll make it a little smaller, so I can get the get the refractory cement in the lining of this coal forge closer to the to the air hole where the where the actual coal is hottest. So anyway, what we did is we we got this laid out on here, and we transfer punched this pattern of holes in these two. These two holes here because they're the mounting holes, but uh, anyway, you can see the the inner line. That's how big a piece we're going to cut, and then it'll have these holes. I may put a couple more holes in there. We'll have to see how it fits when I get it cut out. But anyway, that's our project now. I'll, uh, I'm going to do a little wire brushing on here, put a little paint on there, it'll probably burn off, but don't hurt to have it sealed up to start with here, and, uh, anyway, that's, like I said, that's the project, project at the moment, uh, we'll bring you back when we get set up to cut this, uh, piece out of this with the plasma cutter well we got it sanded off a little bit where that bigger cover where that bigger cover was on here sanded that off I'm gonna flip it over and do the bottom now but uh, what I'm using here is this it's a Eastwood product they're a restoration tool company kind of but uh high temp coating cast iron color resists heat up to 1200 degrees now i'll probably be a little hotter than that most of the time but anyway it's it'll help protect it i've used this on a couple couple cars that i've restored and i use them on the exhaust manifolds but um by no way sponsored. I pay for everything I got here. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna flip this over and uh, we'll do the bottom side. Now 
not all that heavy, but you just got to be careful because it's cast iron. That stuff sometimes like glass, especially as old as this is, probably. All right. Hope you can see what's going on here. We'll go ahead and we're not gonna do this whole bottom, just out out of ways where the where the heat had burnt some of that paint off. This dries to a oh it's a well you see on the top side it's kind of a silver looking color. Not quite an aluminum silver looking, but I guess a, a like a new cast iron would be a good description of the color. And anyway, we're not gonna do the whole thing. Alrighty, that's about it, I think. Got a good coat on there. Let that dry for a while and proceed on to the next part. Well, we got our new cover in the bottom of our rivet forge here. Um, that's half inch thick material and uh, three eighths holes around the outside and, and a seven sixteenths hole in the middle there. I put the blower on there and it, it gives it a good blast of air, so it ought to work. Anyway, I don't, this is what they had on there. Just the old sewer, sewer grate cover. But uh, this outside row of holes set over the pot itself and not over the, the whatever that thing, true truey hole. But uh, <clears throat> it, uh, so I eliminated those and I had to make it five inches in diameter to catch these two mounting bolts. But I think it, uh, I plasma cut that out of a, out of a sheet of scrap iron that I had around here. But uh, just set it up with a circle cutter and cut it out. Close enough for the this job anyway. But now the next thing is we gotta line line the inside of this with some refractory cement. As you can see here, it says clay before using. There's uh, several recipes for what to line these with. I got some refractory cement, so that's what we're gonna use on it. These little bungs on here are for the shield that goes on the back to keep the heat away from the blower handle. Anyway, we're moving right along on this. Kind of a fun little project. Uh, I'll bring you back when we get around to mixing up some uh, refractory. It's, I'll show you what we got here to, to use for refractory. We got a Knox cast. 50 pound bag, and I got a little bit of ply brico refractory left too, so. Knock, I guess is how you say it. In Sun, Oak Hill, Ohio. Uh, this stuff was kind of hard to find around my area. This ply brico, the main supplier, they, they left, left town. I think I might have stated that in another video, but anyway. We're, uh, we're proceeding along with this little project. I always go up to the, there's a blacksmith here in town, Blacksmith Omaha. And uh, they, they, the people are real friendly there. They advise me on a few things. And in fact, he's the one that found the re refractory cement for me. So it uh, it's a learning process and we're moving right along here, so we'll see you in a bit. Well, we're back on our uh, little coal forge, root forge, lining with the refractory. 
I'll show you what we got going here and then I'll probably set you up on a, a time-lapse deal to just uh, watch the process I guess I'll show you what we got going here all right here's our little rivet forge coal forge um, we made a new vent hole for it here I got the all the holes covered up all the holes covered up in here so that uh, I don't get no refractory cement down in there I hope to have it up above these you know it'd probably be hope to be a couple inches deep here maybe but uh, have to see how much refractory I got I spotted these carriage bolts on here so in the future if I got to take the bottom off I can don't got to dig the dig that uh, refractory out of there in case them bolt them carriage bolts would spin in that hole I didn't make square holes for the carriage bolts so anyway the the pans all lined with a good coating of some high temp cast iron paint that I had around here for car exhaust manifold uh, that's to keep it the pan from maybe rusting out underneath the refractory so my tools I got going here anytime you mess with that refractory cement you got to have a good particulate respirator because that silica in there is really bad for your lungs so make sure if you're ever messing with any of this any of this uh, si uh, refractory cement that you have a good respirator on anyway and I got my uh, little hoe to do the mixing probably safety glasses a little trowel and a couple pair of gloves I hope to shape it with by my hand with my hands so I'll wear a pair of dishwashing gloves with a pair of plastic gloves underneath there but anyway I think we're ready to go we'll get you set up over here and watch the process I guess Well, alrighty, everyone got it, got it poured in there. Uh, I had to find a little jar. I mixed it just that little bit drop, last drop of water I put in there might have been too much, but uh, it finished off nice. But I, I hope I can still above, still over my vent holes there. But I don't know. I think it come out all right. I was thinking about stacking it up on the sides here a little bit, but I don't know that that's needed really. I'll have to ask a few of the more experienced blacksmiths around here than me. But anyway, uh, got her done. We'll have to uh, let her dry a few days here and see what she looks like. But uh, I want to thank you for joining along. I worked up a sweat on that one. It, uh, it seemed like uh, mixing it was a lot of work, a lot more than I thought, but... I guess it is just a cement it's pretty tacky stuff so but anyway we'll give her a couple days and uh i'll be back and take a shot of it when it starts to cure up a little bit well here she is all back together got the refractory lining in here uh put the shield on i don't think this is by i know it's not an original shield it's a piece of stainless steel somebody made somewhere along the line but then we got the champion blower mounted on the back nice little hand crank blower puts out a pretty good breeze um, but anyway that's the that's the completed part of my little rivet forge here got a 
got it ready to go. I'm, I'm still, it's been two weeks since I did the refractory lining. I'm still letting it dry out a little bit. I'll probably light a, a little bit, uh, like a little wood fire or something. Something that don't get quite as hot as the coal to see if I can suck a little more of that moisture out of there. But before I put the coal in there, give it a try. But I don't know what I'm going to do. Eventually, I'm going to have to put this under a hood, exhaust hood or something to catch the smoke or coming off of it. But uh, for the first try, I'll probably just set it outside the garage door here a little bit and see what happens. But anyway, thanks a bunch for joining along. Sorry, this is kind of a mixed up uh, video. It's I lost part of it. Part of the... Of the time lapse mixing in the refractory and stuff like that so anyway uh, I really appreciate you watching give me a thumbs up if you will and we'll see you on the next one